Paola Cunha Ferraz. Uh, she is a PhD student from Unicamp. She will talk about a multi-scale approach for pressure velocity to phase flow in high contrast porous media. Please, Paola. Thank you, uh, thank you everyone. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about a multi-scale approach for a pressure velocity to phase flow in high con contrast porous media. This work was, uh, is the team of my master's dissertation under the, uh, under the orientation of Professor Abreu with, uh, with uh, collaborators uh, Bustos and uh, Professor Anderson Lambert. Uh, in this talk, I'm going to give an introduction and motivation of uh, uh, our choose of resolution of the pressure velocity problem. I'm going to talk briefly about the discretization of uh, by hypermixed finite elements very briefly that's going to lead to a linear system that we are going to solve to numerical solve with a mood scale recursive conjugate gradient method. Okay, that's the focus of my my work and then some numerical experiments. Okay, uh, we are interested on in the uh, num uh, a numerical method for the approximation of the uh, personal velocity system here in its mix mixed form. Okay, it's a simple model with appropriate bordering conditions. And the main point we want to see is the computational time. Uh, this uh, pressure velocity problems uh, appears in many applications, but we are basically we're interested in reservoir simulation applications, and they appear in two and three uh, phase phase flow problems, right in the phase formulations. We can also add uh, hysteresis in these formulations, and we have other types of problems. We can also see uh, pressure velocity problems, the types that we are going to solve here, in pseudo-parabolic problems. And this is a, a future work that we uh, I'm going to we are going to attack. Okay, the most, the, why we, we're trying to focus on the computational time? Basically, uh, the motivation came from the uh, works of uh, Furtado and Pereira, okay, uh, about uh, scale of problems, where the, we have the, uh, since we are uh, working with uh, heterogeneous porous media, the mood scale natures of the, the media uh, we have uh, uncertainties of the parameters of uh, permeabilities and porosities. This calls for statistical formulations. L it leads to naturally to a Monte Carlo framework. Okay, so we are going to solve the simulation in like a millions, uh, mil uh, many many times, many many realizations. So we can have a stochastical uh, confined solution. Okay. So, this is why we want a, a, a numerical scheme that is fast, okay, computationally talking about, because this, this uh, if the time is too, is too large, it can be a serious problem so, to solve these types of frameworks, okay? So, we have the pressure velocity problem, okay? We are going to discretize it by a uh, mix, uh, highly mixed finite element method because uh, it's locally conservative and uh, was found accurate to uh, computation of the velocity in heterogeneous problems. And uh, is usually the velocity is the, is the variable that we want to, we, we need for the simulations, okay? And also, we, it leads to a linear system that's symmetric positive definite. It has good properties and we, we, we have uh, lots of uh, numerical schemes that are very robust and very un, uh, understood in the literature, okay? So, uh, basically, uh, we are going to use the finite elements with approximation space of lowest, lowest, lowest index uh, Javier Thomas, okay? with uh, Lagrange multipliers that we are going to uh, reduce. And we obtain this system, okay, uh, for the pressure. 
it's a uh, symmetric definite positive and its coefficients depends of the permeability of the, the median, okay? Uh, and see, uh, we can see that if we have a heterogeneous median or whether we have a, f a fast variation of these coefficient, coefficients, the matrix is uh, ill-conditioning, okay? So it's really hard to, uh, to solve. Also, since we're talking about uh, uh, oil recovery problems, we, we since for the, the scales of the, reserv the reservoirs, uh, it tends to lead to re very large linear systems with millions of variables. So we have, uh, it's, uh, we have a lot of variables to, to solve in a linear system. This, uh, the, so the time, computational time usually is, it grows. And we want to do that in a Monte Carlo formulation. So if we have a, a numerical method with a very large, very large computational time, we, it's very hard to do these frameworks, okay? So that's why we want to find methods to approximate solution in a reasonable computational time in relation to this, this type of, of problems, okay? So, uh, now uh, we, in, the, in our work, we start to look for a numerical method. What kind of numerical method that we can think of that can be uh, f more faster? So, since the matrix of our problem is a symmetric definite positive, and the size of the, the linear system is very large, a natural choice is a clear love method the preconditional conjugate gradient method, that's, it's, it's very robust, it's, very, it's all used a lot, and it's, it's very fast and easy to implement. And we end up finding a method that has a multigrid method as a preconditioner. What's interesting because the, uh, the multi-scale natural, uh, the heterogeneous of the medium, I'm sorry, because uh, the multigrid method, he uses uh, different scales, different uh, grid size to, approx to uh, find approximations. And we can, we can uh, how can I say, we can use these properties of the medium. So we use the multi-scale conjugate gradient method that we, the name we gave it. It was, is not, we did develop, it was introduced by the, by Lachner Minikoff in 2000 in its paper, Multiscale Linear Solvers for Very Large Systems Derived from PDEs, okay? And basically, he, the, basically the, this method combines, today uh, numerical methods for linear systems are divided in Krilov methods, multigrid methods, is the stationary methods. And this uh, method that we, we are using combines all those three methods. And see, uh, since uh, it's important, the precondition is very important because the matrix is ill-conditioned, okay? So we have the preconju preconjugate gradient method. I'm sorry, preconditioned conjugate gradient method. And this is the precondition that we are going to use. This precondition represents a multigrid method. In using two levels where we have a fine grid and a quartz grid, and we goes to one, one to another, okay? Multigrid, uh, multi, uh, multigrid methods, they are used to, they use uh, different, different grid size to accelerate, uh, accelerate uh, uh, sorry, relaxation methods. It's very used. So we have the precondition, and we have the, this matrix here, C, is the, is the quartzite operator that we, we are going to apply the preconditioner. We are going to go to a, a quartzite grid, and this quartzite grid, we are going to have to solve another linear system. And this another linear system is a quartzite, and we are going to, e, this matrix is obtained by the rediscretization of the, of the equation, the, elliptic equation, the pressure velocity equation. So when we apply the inverse of the square uh, operating the vector, 
it's going to be computed by the same algorithm. Uh, that means we have the uh, final grid. We go to a coarse grid when we have to solve a coarse linear system. We go when we solve this coarse linear system, we apply again the conjugate gradient method with the multigrid uh, precondition, and we will go to a coarse grid. And that is the recursive part of this algorithm. And the algorithm ends on the crisis grid where we solve the linear system by direct method, the LU factorization. So we expect, expect in the coarse grid, we, the size of the matrix is, is not very large, so we can use a direct method without problems. So, and also, this way, the algorithm itself determines the effort necessary in each level, okay? This uh, matrix is P key. This P is stylized and R is stylized. They represent the parts of the multigrid method, these parts where we, how to, we go to a coarse grid. The P and Q, uh, they are this, uh, this muter. This, mut this muter is uh, an iteration of a stationary method. It's where the, our, uh, our algorithm combines those three types of uh, linear system methods. Uh, so we have a uh, fixed number of iterations that they're going to solve. And the, in the objective of this muter is to reduce the high, uh, high, high, high oscillatory uh, angel values. Angel values? Frequencies. Oh? Frequencies. frequencies, I'm sorry. The high frequencies of the, of the solution. Okay, so when we do that, we, it's important to treat the boundary carefully because it's not very good sca to in scaling. And when this happens, it reduces the convergence of the smoother. Uh, here, we have a, a difference from the original paper of this algorithm where the authors consider boundary conditions e equal to zero. Actually, they, they, they solve an a equivalent uh, an equivalent problem where they use a, a variable change where they put the equal they put the boundary conditions equal to zero, so they don't have a few problems that come from from bad ex scalability. So, but in, well, in our work, we use the hybrid mix finite elements where we have in the discretion. Uh, how to impose for, uh, strongly the boundary conditions. So it's not very interesting to do that. But since we have this a little bit problem, we had to increase the number of the iterations of the smoother. In the, in the paper of Minikoff, they put the, the, the iterations of the smoother as n, where n is the grid dimension. We have to put three halves of n a little bit larger to achieve convergence of the, the conjugate, conjugate gradient method in each level. Okay, so the stylized P and R on the, on the precondition are the prolongation restriction oper operators. They are responsible for the transference of, of the vectors between the, between the grids. We choose the same, uh, the same kind of operations of Lack and Minikoff Prolongation is the tensor product of cell center linear interpolations, and restriction is the adjoint of the prolongation operator, so you can keep this, uh, the precondition matrix symmetrically definite positive, and we can use the conjugate gradient method. The operators are given by these instances here. Basically, they are kind of a average of the cells uh, around a uh, uh, a specific cell, okay, nothing more. And also, as in the smoother, we have to uh, be careful uh, how to, to apply these uh, these transfer transfer operators on the on the boundaries, okay. So here we have an example of uh, a stencil that we can use on the boundaries. It's the same stencil used. Uh, by Lacan and Minikoff, basically they create ghost cells around outside. They repeat the values on the boundaries outside, and they apply the previous stencil. Okay, in the paper of Lacan and Minikoff, they say they key this kind of 
of a period can work for both Newman and dictionary boundaries. He they, and, and uh, he and they used like this, but uh, we have a few problems because mostly we find on the literature these kinds of operators are mostly used in the context of finite difference uh, discretization, and we are using a finite element method. So maybe we could just do something different here. We tried, but we didn't have we didn't succeed very very well about this. It's not very well understood. Um, I'm sorry, it's not very well, well understood how those operations work in the context of finite, uh, I'm sorry, of element, uh, finite element methods. Okay, now an important part is how you're going to find the, the uh, discrete operator in a coarse grid because all of this we want to solve the linear system in a fine grid, okay? So in a fine grid, we have the permeability, the permeability fields that that's going to uh, that are going to co the coefficients of our matrix. But in the coarsest grid, we don't have, so we have to find a way to to approximate the permeability fields on a coarse grid. We use the same methods, method used by Lakin and Minikoff, where he defines a trans transmissivity. Uh, permeability tensor is kind of a harmonic uh, average of the fine cell inside a coarser cell. It it's it's shown to be quite effic efficient for our problems. It's, we didn't have many, many problems with this. Um, basically, this is the method. Now, I'm going to show a few experiments, two do, two dimensional numerical experiments with this algorithm. Okay, uh, the object of using this algorithm is we want to be computational fast. Okay, so f we are going to show two test, two test cases. Show the computational time and numerical solution for a variable, a constant permeability fields and show that our method is solving accurately. And also, uh, something important, we want to, we, we implement this algorithm from scratch in a serial code, uh, in a way to control every step, step, and we want to to make an algorithm that's portable. Also, we want to, uh, we really want to, uh, an algorithm that could be used in a basic laptop, so anyone could uh, solve a kind of simulation e uh, easily, and portable, and uh, in its own computer. It was in pre language, and the experiments were made in a computer that we have, they're in our group. Uh, they, he's a little better than the basic laptop, but all experiments was also made in my basic laptop and the results was, were basically the same. So, uh, for the var var variable permeability field, we have here, we use a, a, a model for, from Glenn and Sharp. We have a, where the permeability field, it's a, a the log of a Gaussian that they determined by its mean and covariance here. And here in, the, in our experiments, we use covariance of two, okay? So we, we consider these two kinds of var variable and constant. The constant is, ta is 10 to minus six, the permeability field, and the variable, variable permeability field had a, a rate from max and min in minimum permeability of 10 to plus seven. So the convergence criterion that we use to, for the conjugate gradient method is uh, an average of the, the a normalization of the residual by any, that is the total number of elements that we have. And we set the tolerance for 10 to minus seven. Okay, so the test problem one is a simple, uh, a simple Poisson elliptic problem, okay, we have a, uh, as boundary condition here, we have uh, uh, we have no flux up up and down on the our boundary. We have an influx here equal to one on the left side, and we put a, a reference pressure equal to zero here on the right side. We solve it for a grid for a thousand by twenty four thousand by twenty four grids in. Uh, 
domain of uh, 500, 512 meters. So this is the behavior of the iter iterations by each level. How uh, I said before, we have a fine level where we are going to solve our problem, and we have the next level, the courses level, that we are we also solving a linear system here by conjugate gradient method, and they are going to goes between the grids by the multigrid preconditioner. So here we show the total number of accumulative iterations. So we have here for the constant permeability field, in the finest grid we have two, only two iterations for the convergence. And if you can see the, the in the quartz grid, the cumulative iterations were very, quite small, two, four, 12, 19. For the variable permeability field, we have a little more iterations, seven, but still extremely, extremely small. And here we have a, a, a for a 2000 by, 2048 by 2048 variable field. And we have all in the final screen, we had only five iterations. These iterations are according to the findings of Lacken and Minikoff that has a, that they show that this method has a very few, it needs very few iterations of conjugate gradient method to converge for a, for a tolerance that we give. But here we have a little problem with him because of the time, computational time is quite large for what we want to do. So if the constant permeability field, we have seven minutes for convergence and the variables, the variable permeability field so for the 1024, 60 minutes, and the two, two hours for the 2048 uh, problem. So this, this uh, times are, were quite large, and we didn't really, we were, weren't really expecting this because in Lakhmenikov they don't talk much about the computational time. Okay, here is the, how the, the behavior of the residual goes at each iter iterations. You can see that it reduces really very fast in the, the first three iterations and goes to the tolerance, okay? So here is just to show you the pressure profile and the velocity field profile. Here you can see that we, it's how we, we expect it to be. It comes in in the left side, goes out here on the right side. And we have here the pressure profile. We can see here a few, uh, a few high, high pressure uh, points here. It's not a, uh, how can I say, it's not oscillations of the method, but because the permeability field is high, highly, uh, highly variable, and we, and the uh, discretization by uh, mixed finite elements is known to represent really well this, uh, this kind of variations. And also because we have a uh, incoming flux here, so we have a uh, really high pressure coming inside here. So we, we have these points here. And it goes a little bit smoother uh, as it goes on the domain. So, but you can see this still have a little bit, little bit variations here. This is the, uh, to compare the constant, we have a smooth here uh, for the pressure. It goes as we expected, as also uh, the uh, velocity field. And now we are going to see the test problem two is the five, part of five, of five spot problem. We have no flux in, in all the domains uh, except two points where we have a source term coming in in this point and coming out here. We have also a 1,000 by 24 by 1,024 grid, okay? It's the same kind. And here we have uh, the iterations by levels and time. Here, something a little bit weird happened we have only one iteration for all in the finest grid for all our 
our simulations here for a constant and variable permeability fields. And here we can see the time was still large. We have three minutes for the 1000 by 24 by 1024 uh, problems and uh, 30 minutes to the largest one. Okay, this 30 minutes is, was a little bit, uh, how can I say, it's larger than we expected. Also, the three minutes, we really wanted that you, it was only one minute, some kind of really fast, but still, we even with the lowest possible iteration, we still had a large, a large, uh, a large time. Okay, so here is the pressure velocity fields here. You can see we capture the profile of velocity. Same for the, the uh, homogeneous permeability field. And so I'm going to now talk about some concluding remarks of our work. So we have results in agreement with the findings of Lacan and Minikoff that's made us very happy, but the computational time was too large in the context of reservoir simulations that we wanted. Eh? So imagine that we have a problem that we're going to simulate for five years with a time step of half a day. So each time step we have to solve a, a linear system of that, um, uh, that size. So it's 3,650 times solving a linear system. So if you have like a like the 30 minutes one, it's about uh, three to four months of simulation only. It is for one realization. If you want to go to a Monte Carlo framework, it's, it's many, many, many realizations. So it's, each realization is three months. It's, it's not viable for a uh, simulation. Okay? So also, we, we realized that the the computation efforts concentrates completely on the precondition, especially on smoother, and leads almost, it's almost inverted the linear system. It's so good that it's almost inverted linear system. We can see by the five spot experiment, only one iteration to converge, even the, in the case of variable permeability fields. So this is, we are used to know that it's not a really good idea computationally, and it shows on the computational time. So also, we try to, as I said before, to, change a little bit the prolongation restriction operators. Unfortunately, it wasn't, uh, we didn't have good results. It, it worsened the effort on the preconditioner. We man managed to reduce the number of iterations, but the computational time was ridiculous. <laughs> More than four hours for a, a dimension of the size that we want to solve. Also, since we are, we are uh, working with a uh, multigrid. Uh, multigrid in general have many sensitive parameters, especially here. We saw that the iterations of the smoother were sensitive. We had to change be simply because of the boundary conditions. The smoother itself, we use a red black, I don't remember if I say, symmetrical side. Uh, we already use acceleration to see if it goes faster, but this still, it's quite slow in computational time. Also, as I said before, the transference operator. So it's many sensitive parameters we need fine tuning. So it's a little compli it's a lot complicated, and we don't have a theory for this. It's all always it's all um, it's everything is experimental. Sir, so, okay. So in the end. The method didn't work how we expected to work with our objective. So we have a little bit ideas of the next steps. We, we want to try the preconjugate gradient method with the Chubchev precondition so to see if the, we can use this to see if a good idea, but we don't know if it's going to work. It's still an idea. We need, we maybe, uh, Maybe do a step back and see the discrete equ equ uh, equation. See, we we need to do something else to to make the matrix uh, more well conditioning that it is. We don't know. We still are thinking about it. So, but this is uh, how we we concluded. Okay. So now 
I want to thank the agencies that financed my research. I also want to CAPES for my graduate fellowship. And thank you for your attention. Thank you very much.